The Undercountry Music News is an excerpt of the weekly internet broadcast, Undercountry Music, which features music from great country artists you won't hear on mainstream radio, as well as a roundup of the most interesting country music news of the week without all the fluff. This program you're listening to right now contains only the news portion of the show. To listen and subscribe to the full weekly episode containing the music and interviews, please visit undercountrymusic.com or simply subscribe to the Undercountry Music Podcast on iTunes. Let's get into it. It's not new news to me, but new news, old news, fantabulous news. Now it's time for the Hey, I could do like that Star Trek voice. No, no, actually, I can't. The Under Country Music News. If you've never heard this show before, then you don't know what the F I'm doing here. And half the time, I don't know what the F I'm doing here either. So we're both going to F this thing up together. What do you say? All right, the Under Country Music News. That is where each and every week I go onto the website Google and I type in the search term Country Music News. And whatever websites show up on the front page of Google, I go into them. I see what kind of country music news they have. And sometimes they got Jack Ola for news. It's like like crappy press releases and People Magazine fluff and somebody's new dress style or some junk like that. But usually they'll have like just one sometimes two really, really good stories that are, that are worthy of, of feeding you. That's right. Yes, we consume it. But if I go onto a website that has no country music news and it's all junk and garbage, I award that website with the Under Country Music News Wet Belch of the Week. That's right. I actually belch on the air. <coughs> but a whole lot better than that. Anyway, so uh, basically I take, I, I gather all the tiny little golden nuggets of news and I compress them all into one big old news ball with all the good stuff and I lay it right in your lap. That's what I do. And that's why you come here, right? Yeah. Let's get into it. Over at CMT, Chris Young undergoes surgery and cancels his June 7th CMA Music Festival appearance, as well as a four-hour autograph session because of a kitchen accident. Now, apparently he was doing some late-night chopping in the kitchen of a salad or something. Uh, Got a little crazy with the knife, slipped, and he cut his hand and had to have some tendons repaired at the hospital. All right. Now, here's what I don't get. Now, Chris Young, I'm not saying he doesn't play an instrument, because actually I don't know, and I'm not going to make that claim. But he's not known for being an instrumentalist, pianist, guitarist, what have you. And he's got, like, all these Nashville A players playing behind him. So why the hell is this guy canceling a a show, you know, because he cuts a hand? I mean, he does have another hand, and last time I checked... You don't need your hands to stand on a stage and sing. I mean, I'm sure he must have been in some pain, but wrap that sucker, get out there and sing. 
All right? I, I mean, <laughs> come on. And uh, the autograph session. Well, okay, it's a four-hour autograph session. It was probably the hand that he signs with. But, you know, even if it's not the hand that you sign with, I mean, you know, let's say you cut your right hand. All right? Well, then sign with the left. If anything, those autographs, number one, your fans are going to appreciate you a whole lot more because you came in with a carved up hand and you still made it and you're still signing your name. And, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, the fact that you signed it with your wrong hand during that situation and they got the autograph from that time you carved up your hand. I think that would probably make that autograph even more special and more of a collector's item and actually worth more money, you know, <laughs> if someday they wanted to sell it as memorabilia. I mean, damn. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like every single week here on this show, I report cancellations by dumb you know, over dumb, wimpy crapola every single week on this show. You know, I thought country folks were supposed to be tough, tougher than everyone else. I thought that's the whole persona. I mean, hell, uh, you know, we got these guys like, like Craig Morgan last week. I'm here telling you that, that this guy went and got shoulder surgery and canceled shows. He scheduled a surgery when he had a run of shows coming up. I mean, and he's not an instrumentalist. All he does is sing. So what? You can put your arm in a sling and sing, dude. Why the hell are you canceling shows? Anyway, we're still on Chris Young Hell here. Okay, you know what? I toured and recorded in the world of punk rock for 16 years doing baloney and bean tours, okay? I, I didn't ride in some pampered to air-conditioned tour bus. You know what? And I One day, I drilled a hole through one of my fingers, you know, not all the way through it. It went down and it hit the bone, but, you know, enough to where every time my, my heart would pump, a big stream of blood would go shooting across the room, okay? But, um, and I played, and it was on my fret hand. I'm a guitarist. I'm an actual real guitarist. I'm not one of these country fluff balls that poses with it like a piece of damn jewelry. I, I've been playing guitar since I was 10 years old, okay? Um... You know, and I played a two-hour show with a hole in my finger the following night. I don't want to freaking hear it. All right, okay, maybe that's not as bad as carving up your hand, but, you know, he's not an instrumentalist. Okay, well, I'm going to do you one even better. I broke my damn leg on stage one night. I finished the show in a chair. Not only did I finish that show in a chair and go to the hospital afterwards, but I also made every single show after that, and I played every single show after that. Don't you tell me that a singer who slices his hand needs to cancel shows or sessions where people are expecting it and counting on them. That's total BS. Chris Young, I'm calling you a wuss, and I mean it. That's the God's honest truth. Fellas... Let's toughen up around here a little bit, you know? I'm going to send Miranda Lambert out to kick your ass. All right. Over at CountryWeekly.com, Billy Ray Cyrus, you know, Mr. Achy Breaky, he just finished walking the red carpet at the premiere of his new movie called Like a Country Song. Billy Ray plays the father of a country artist struggling with addiction and ego problems. Hmm. Change that country artist to pop artist, and you think that role hits a little close to home there? <laughs> anyway, you can see the trailer for this movie over at countryweekly.com. Now, I also have a little bit of good news to report here, thanks to countryweekly.com, and that is that Randy Travis, who suffered both a heart attack and a stroke last year, was spotted at Dolly Parton's concert in Thackerville, Oklahoma on May 31st. And he hung around after the show to hang out with Dolly. Now there's some therapy for you when you're recovering from a stroke and a heart attack. <laughs> Nestle in between those babies. Anyway, <laughs> there are pictures of them hanging out. No, not pictures like that. 
There are pictures of them hanging out. Randy was up, walking around, and actually looked pretty good. I'm sure he's still got a long way to go on his recovery because, you know, there was no word in the story about, you know, how he's speaking or even if he is speaking or how he's getting around, but just the fact that he is up on his feet and out and about attending concerts and doesn't look like death warmed over, that's great news. And I I mean that. I'm not cutting up here, you know. Godspeed, Randy Travis. Great, great to see that. Awesome news. All right. Getting our tails over to tasteofcountry.com. What do they got over there? Now there's, there's a real burp. They got the undercountry music news. Wet belch of the week. Because they got zippity doo da zippity a. They got the undercountry music news. Wet belch of the week today. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, you don't really roll in here to hear me be talented, right? God, I hope not. But anyway, they sucked this week. They had nothing. And Taste of Country got to taste my wet belch. (laughs) And it's especially yummy today because I just got back from Steak and Shake where I got the uh, five-way chili. It was good. Now, you know, the first time the lady brought it out to me, it didn't hardly have any chili in it. And, like, one of the things about the five-way chili in the description, it says it actually comes with extra chili. In WTF. Dang it. Get your act together, Steak and Shake. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the wet belch. Over at GAC, Great American Country, Alan Jackson announces his 25th anniversary tour. And has assured fans that this is not a farewell tour and that he plans on being active well into his ripe old age. Good for him. A lot of artists in his position would totally BS and pull that trick, you know, that farewell tour trick to try and sell out everywhere. And I'm really glad he didn't do that because it's always BS. I've seen it a million times. And I've seen idiots fall for it a million and five times. Anyway, the tour is going to kick off in spring of 2015. Next year. Okay. Nothing like advance notice. Over at theboot.com. Dale Watson will release the third installment of his Truckin' Sessions album trilogy on July 8th. The first part was released in 1998. So he's doing like one every, like, what, eight years or something? Anyway, one of the songs on this upcoming third installment of this, uh, the last one was like 2004 or something, um, it was... um. One of the songs was written while he was a guest on a radio station, and truckers actually called into the station to give him lyrics for the song. Now, all three albums of this trilogy are going to be available as one package deal, and you can pre-order it right now via a link right there at theboot.com under the uh, country music news section. All right, I like that. Over at Nashville Gab. I think they got the wet belts last week. Well, they don't get it this week. They do have a video of Keith Urban performing in 1991 with a Sean Cassidy feathered hairdo. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Get over there and check it out. That's about the only thing they got over this week. There this week. You know, they've really gone downhill over there. It's sad to say. I used to always be able to find something awesome over there. Well, I guess I I did. Uh, Keith Urban with feathered Sean Cassidy hair. I'll take it. Over at the 615, there is a video of Luke Bryan and Florida Georgia Line.
doing a parody of the famous Jay-Z elevator fight with Beyonce's cousin or sister, whoever the hell she was. Anyway, uh, this time it's between Florida Georgia Line and Luke Bryan. And I, I tried to watch it, but Comcast Internet sucks! Hopefully you'll have better luck than I did. I still haven't seen it, but just the fact that they've got it over there is good enough for me to tell you to go over there and check it out. Right! Country Standard Time! Blackberry Smoke's new live album entitled Leave a Scar is going to drop on July 8th, and it's also going to include one previously unrecorded song called Payback's a Bitch. There will also be a live DVD to go with this. It's going to include the making of the song Yesterday's Wine, which is a song of theirs that was uh, recorded with them, Jamie Johnson, and also the late George Jones. Sounds like good stuff to me. And to highlight further what a freaking wuss Chris Young is, Luke Bryan who's not exactly one of my favorites, mind you. On May 30th, Luke Bryan fell off the stage and injured himself to the point of requiring stitches. And he continued to perform the show. Even He, he even continued to perform the dang song. You know, it stopped for a minute, and then he got back up, dusted himself off, and finished the song, and also finished the show and kept all his upcoming performances on the books. Yeah. You know what? Um, Luke Bryan might be a, a, a male model boy singing, uh, singing, I can't even call it bro country. It's not even good enough to be that. I mean, Luke Bryan sucks. But I got to tell you what. He just, he just, he now sucks slightly less in my eyes. He, he, at least he's a trooper. I'll give him that. And that's, he, did, he did what a performer ought to do in that situation. Instead of going and crying and canceling stuff. Freaking mama's boys and country. All right. Nashville.com. Making its debut here on the Under Country Music News. It's the first time I've seen them show up on the front page of Google under the search term Country Music News. It's a pretty damn ugly website, actually. And there's some broken stuff right there on the page for Country Music News, like where you see, like, the the back-end code coming out onto the, onto the page and stuff. Ugh. Anyway, talk to your webmaster, people. Anyway, that stated, there is a story there about Lori Morgan celebrating 30 years as an Opry member. Congratulations, Lori. And uh, welcome to the Under Country Music News Roll, Nashville.com. And, uh, well, that's about all they got over there. And this has been your Under Country Music News 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 This is how I do. I'm spending all night shooting bullets at the moon. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Undercountry Music News. The Undercountry Music News is just a small excerpt of the weekly, hour long internet broadcast, Undercountry Music, where I, Neil Smith, not only round up the week in country music news and put my own spin on it, but I also play music and have great interviews by lesser known original country acts, the kind that you won't hear on mainstream country radio. If you're thirsting for that, get on over to undercountrymusic.com where you can listen and subscribe. You can also subscribe via iTunes to Undercountry Music. Thanks so much. Stay under, stay country.